Can you believe it? Last year I owned 13 cars and today I am down to just six. Am I no longer considered a car hoarder? Today, let's talk about it. So if you know me, then you know I've had a problem with automobiles. Generally speaking, owning too many of them at one time. I like experiencing all types of vehicles, delving into the history, learning about their quirks, fixing up cars that might otherwise be on their way to the junkyard. Now, this has provided me with a good deal of joy, but it has also provided me with a great deal of frustration and stress. Not too long ago, I had 13 cars in my yard. And wouldn't you know it, there are only so many projects one person can handle at a time. Some of them didn't start out as projects, but you know, old cars tend to like to break. So I've been doing my best to slim down the hoarding situation here and get things a little bit more under control and to not be such an impulsive idiot when it comes to vehicle purchases, even if it is just for the YouTubes. And today I'm actually going to celebrate. And you know why? Because as of just a few hours ago, I'm down to six cars. If you saw my selling update video, you'll know that I recently sold my manual Nissan Altima, that terrible North Star V8 Cadillac, that basket case Volkswagen Fox Wagon, and the overwhelmingly broken Land Cruiser. And earlier today, I sold my 1993 Toyota Chaser that I had imported from Japan. I am going to miss driving that thing, but it's real nice to have the weight of 13 cars off of my shoulders. Hallelujah! It's been quite quite a few years since I've owned this few vehicles, and honestly, it's a relief. So today, why don't we take a close look at what I still have left in the Hello Road fleet? Let's start with a car that I've owned the longest, my 2005 Scion XB. Okay, so I've owned this 2005 Scion XB for almost 20 years. I've never owned a car for longer than I've owned this one. And I've got 229,000 miles on this thing. I think when we bought it, it had like four miles on it. So yeah, we've almost driven to the moon in this car. All right, so why did I buy this vehicle? So way back in like 2004, when Toyota started selling this vehicle in the United States, I knew I had to have one. I had been interested in Japanese cars for a long time. And I remember the Toyota BB, which is basically the Japanese version of this car and when they brought it to the United States I was like oh my gosh I could own a car that is very much designed for the Japanese market and I know a lot of people don't like how these things look they're very awkward they're very boxy they're very weird but I just happen to love that it was basically like a very JDM looking car that was now being sold for the US market and it was about 17 grand out the door I think the car only cost about 14.5 but yeah 17 grand out the door this was the first new car that I've ever bought and yeah I still have it 20 years later okay so what about memorable stories with this vehicle. There are so many, I, I couldn't even list them all. I'd say probably the most memorable stuff is when me and my wife would take this vehicle on long road trips. We drove across the United States countless times. We went to the Redwoods, we went to Utah, drove it through New York City. We used to cart our dogs around in the back. And there's just so many stories that are wrapped up and etched into the metal of this thing that when I started thinking about, oh, maybe I should get rid of this vehicle, it's kind of hard to do that because there's so much like sentimental value here. So what kind of maintenance has this vehicle needed? After 20 years and almost 230,000 miles, almost nothing. This has been one of the most reliable vehicles I've ever owned in my life. And it's pretty insane that it has only required like oil changes, brakes, and tires. There really hasn't been anything else. It's still on the original clutch. But yeah, I, I've never changed the belts. I've never changed the spark plugs. Even the interior, like it looks brand new almost in here. There's no cracks on the dashboard. The headliner's intact. The seats look amazing. And we're not easy on this car. We've had dogs in the back. We've driven it everywhere and it looks looks kind of new. Okay, so what have I done to restore the car? The paint, we let this car sit and bake in the hot sun for like almost 15 years. And it was starting to look a little ratty. The bumper was all broken from some incidents that we had on the road. The back bumper didn't look very good. The paint just, it looked awful. So I figured, okay, I love so much about this vehicle. Why don't I get the thing painted? So a couple years back, I got the car painted and they did an okay job. And I put some new wheels on it because the old ones were getting all rusty. So my favorite thing about this car is the insane practicality the copious amounts of interior space with an exterior footprint that is not that large. It's a really, really excellent use of space. I love vehicles like this where you have a ton of interior space, but the car is still pretty small. Okay, so my least favorite thing about this car is, yeah, it's not very quick. It's pretty slow. The turning radius is pretty terrible. The seats are not that comfortable. You know, it's an economy car. Those are all things that I've gotten used to over 20 years of ownership. So there's really not really much about this car that I don't like. 
you know, I keep going back and forth on this car. You know, I was thinking, oh, I should sell it to try to slim down the fleet. But with everything that I put into it over the years, I think I'm just gonna drive it into the ground and, and just get rid of it when it finally dies. Now my XB looks pretty good, considering I got sort of a subpar paint job on this thing. But I think with the detail, it's gonna really shine. It's gonna look awesome. One thing I did recently is I added this sort of off-center license plate mount because I didn't want to drill into my new bumper. I know that's kind of dumb, but I just kind of like clipped it behind this grill right here. And I kind of like the off-center look of that. I did put these new headlights in when I got the car repainted, but they are terrible. I got these on eBay and the light that comes out of these sucks. It's really hard to see at night. So I do need to replace those with something else. But overall, yeah, the car looks pretty amazing for being 20 years old. All right, moving on to my 1988 Chevrolet Nova Twin Cam. I actually bought this in 2018. I can't believe I owned this vehicle for six years and I've made like less than 10 videos with it, which is kind of dumb because this car is so unique. I should have probably made more videos with this car in that six years. Anyway, I hope to do a few more with this car in the future. Okay, so why did I buy a weird old Toyota-based Chevy Nova? Most people, especially if they're a little bit older, they tend to think of this generation Nova as the worst generation. A lot of people love those Novas from the 60s and 70s. And me, personally, I think this generation of Nova is the best generation Nova because number one, it was reliable. These things run forever. And this one right here, the twin cam model, which they only made about 3000 of, this is incredibly fun to drive. Now this twin cam was a one year only package, 1988 only. You could only get it in black with a red stripe. It's got a Toyota 4A GE inline four cylinder under the hood, makes about 110 horsepower. It has a screaming 7,500 RPM red line. And I really just love the boxy shape of this car. So back when I was a kid, when I was like 16 or 17, I saw one of these on a dealer lot. And I was like, what the heck is that? I had only seen like the base model Novas at the time, I had no idea that there was a special souped up twin cam version. I had some money saved up. I thought I'd go by the dealer and check it out. And the next day I went over there and it was gone. I was so disappointed because this was the only time I had ever seen a twin cam Nova. And then I went like 15 years without seeing another one. And when I saw this come up for sale, it was about eight hours from where I lived. I immediately called the guy. I'm like, I'm coming up today to buy this thing because I have to have it. I've been looking around for these things for like two decades. So memorable stories with this vehicle. I actually have quite a few. I think some of the most memorable stories with this vehicle are the Radwood car shows that I've taken this to. Um, and I think part of it is that I really enjoy taking cars to environments where people will appreciate the rarity, the weirdness of this kind of unloved, forgotten, not really valuable car. This is one of those cars that's extremely rare, but probably not really all that valuable. Maybe that's starting to change as more people become aware of the weird and cool and obscure cars from the 80s and 90s. Okay, so what kind of maintenance is this car needed? Lots of little things, you know, nothing major. The engine has been pretty reliable, but it's needed a few sensors here and there. Yeah, nothing crazy. I've, I've put new tires on it, new brakes. Actually, did need a new radiator, but most of the stuff that I've done to this car hasn't really been all that expensive. So so what have I done to restore the car? Not really anything. There's a few things that I've been meaning to do. There's a few things that I want to do, but I just haven't got around to it, mainly because I've had too many vehicles and now hopefully with getting this fleet down to a more manageable size, I can actually start to tackle some of these things. So my favorite thing about this car is driving it on a Canyon Road. That engine is amazing. Yeah, this thing doesn't make a ton of power, but it's lightweight. This thing weighs about as much as an NA Miata. Yeah, there's a fair amount of body lean, but it handles pretty well in the canyons. And I just love the boxy shape. I love staring at this gauge cluster every single time I drive it. And wow, oh my gosh, I've put about 7,000 miles on this car. I haven't driven it as much as I've wanted to, but yeah, I've, I put a fair amount of miles on this car. It just passed 120,000 miles. I guess my least favorite thing about this car is just knowing that I'm driving a tin can around. There are no safety features here, no airbags. You know, the A pillar and the B pillar and the C pillar are paper thin. This is not a safe vehicle to drive, but really most cars from this era are not safe vehicles. So anytime I drive, it, I'm very hyper aware of my surroundings. I sort of kind of have to treat it like I'm riding a bike. Most people that drive newer cars are desensitized to all this because they have really good safety features. They've got really good sound insulation, got airbags everywhere. So I definitely have to drive a lot more defensively in this car than I would in a brand new car. So what does the future hold for this vehicle? You know, I keep toying with the idea of getting rid of it, but that's only because I've had too many other vehicles that I haven't really been able to spend time with this car. So now that I've slimmed down the fleet a little bit and I sit in this car, I'm definitely not getting rid of it. Maybe in a few years, I'm 
not sure, but this is certainly one of the best cars that I've ever owned. Okay, so a quick walk around of this vehicle. One thing I did recently is I put some new headlights on it. As you can see though, it does need a little bit of a detail. It's getting kind of dirty. The paint was never really very good when I got it and it's only gotten a little bit worse. Kind of getting a little bit of fading on the roof and the trunk and honestly, I feel like that was because the car cover I had was sort of rubbing against the paint. You know, I kind of regret putting a car cover on this thing. But you know, it needs some touch up right here and right here. And I never did fix this stripe right there. I gotta do that. But I did fix the muffler. It no longer bounces around. Previous video I had this thing, it was just sort of dangling, but I did finally fix that. But in general, it looks pretty good for a car that was built in 1988. The inside, you know, a couple things I need to do. I need to put some new covers on my clutch and my brake pedal, never got around to that. And yes, I never did bother putting a headliner in, but I never look up there when I'm driving it because I'm having so much fun just looking out the windshield and hearing this motor. And then these like to break. I need to get new, new cranks because these are incredibly hard to turn. And then this little part always breaks off. So I've replaced these like three times already. But in general, looks pretty decent for a 30 whatever year old car. I think I got it in 2021. I kind of can't remember. It's right around 2021. So I think I've had this vehicle for like three or four years, something like that. And why did I buy it? Well, it turns out I didn't buy this vehicle. My friend Adam had this Jeep sitting in his garage. I don't know how long it was sitting there, but he didn't need it. It was in really rough shape and he just wanted to get rid of it. And he said, you know what? I'll give you this car on one condition as long as when you sell it, any profits that you make will go to charity. I haven't got around to selling this thing yet, but when I do, I'm not gonna make any money on this car because I'm gonna give all of the profits away to charity. And I don't really know why I took it. It's just really hard for me to pass up a free car. I mean, can you blame me, right? And it's a Jeep. Jeeps are a ton of fun off-road and I never owned a Wrangler before, so it seemed like a lot of fun, even though it needed a ton of work. So my most memorable story with this vehicle is when me and my friend Charles took it to basically a muddy parking lot. I know it sounds so juvenile, but we had so much fun just driving driving this thing through muddy puddles. Peppa Pig would have been proud. And we just got completely coated in mud. In fact, some of that mud is still in here, even though we did that like a year ago. So in terms of maintenance, I spent a ton of money on this Wrangler. And by looking at it, you probably couldn't tell because it still kind of looks like a piece of garbage, but all of the mechanical stuff has been refreshed. It's got a new radiator, new valve cover gasket, new belts, new hoses, uh, new spark plugs, new clutch, new brake booster, new master cylinder, new clutch slave cylinder. The gearbox has been worked on. So yeah, this is now a very, very reliable vehicle, even though it looks very unreliable. So my favorite thing about this car is how easy it is to drive. I mean, no roof. It's really easy to see out the back and it's just a ton of fun on a dirt trail. I don't do anything crazy with it. I'm not going rock crawling or anything like that, but it is just so capable. There's a reason why so many people love these things. And you know, the YJ, this one has a square headlight. This was maybe for a long time, one of the least loved versions of the Wrangler, even though technically it's quite good. Okay, so my least favorite thing about this car, I think it's probably the current lack of roof or lack of hard top. There's no way for me to drown out my neighbor's dog when I wanna like shut the windows. You can't shut the windows because there are no windows. Yeah, so I, I do need to get a top for it. I think that's probably my least favorite thing about the car right now. All right, so what does the future hold for this vehicle? As much as I love driving this thing around on dirt, I don't really drive it that much. Currently, I'm kind of using it as a truck. I took out the passenger seat. There is no rear seat. And I go to Home Depot and I just load it up with lumber and rocks and all that kind of stuff because it's really convenient to have a vehicle that has no roof. I mean, I basically have almost as much space as a full-size pickup truck because, you know, those have tiny beds now. It's been really useful in that regard but I'm gonna do a few things. I'm gonna put some new seats in here. I'm gonna fix up these door panels, really clean it up, but I just don't drive it that much. So yes, this one's going up for sale. I don't know when, maybe a few months, maybe a year, I'm not sure, but well, let's do a quick walk around the Jeep. As you can see, it is pretty dirty, but aren't Jeeps supposed to be dirty? If your Jeep is clean, I don't think you're doing it right. The paint is in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of cracking here and there's a couple dents here and there, but overall, I think it looks pretty decent considering the age. But yeah, you look inside and you're like, okay, this thing looks kind of terrible. The panels on the doors look pretty bad. The seats are in pretty bad shape. The dashboard looks really rough, but this is a car that should be going off road. This is a car that should be getting beat on. So I don't really mind that it looks kind of bad. I'm not sure what to do about the wheels either. They're in pretty rough shape. I think they could be polished. I was thinking maybe just painting them black. What do you think I should do? 
Okay, so my 2016 Toyota Prius. Now I've owned this car since it was new and I won't spend a ton of time talking about this vehicle because I do look at the analytics of my videos and anytime I start talking about a Prius, the views just kind of tank. Even though they shouldn't because the Prius is a very important car. This one has been really important for us. We've saved a ton of money on gas in the time we've owned this vehicle. This thing continues to get 52 to 54 miles per gallon. It's got like 90,000 miles on it. We've had it for a long time. We treat it like garbage, but it's been incredibly reliable for us. It's really only needed tires and oil changes and that's it. So I think we've maybe washed this vehicle like maybe three or four times in our entire ownership. It's just a car to us, A to B transportation. We obviously take good care of it mechanically, but physically it's supposed to just get us places. We don't really care how it looks. We did have a little incident where we couldn't avoid a tire that was in the middle of the road. So this is a little bit messed up down here on the front and we've never fixed it because the car still works, no big deal. I might get around to fixing that at some point. And because it kind of bakes in the sun, the clear coat on this plastic panel right here is starting to come off. And I've noticed this on a lot of this generation Prius. It seems like this is a faulty point of this car. And I did actually put a tow hitch on this car. And you might be wondering, why did you put a tow hitch on a Prius? I only put it there because I wanted to put a bike rack on the back of this car. And it's been really useful to cart our bikes around. You get in here and you're like, okay, it's it's a Prius, it's nothing special. And I used to really rag on this car when I first got it. I really was not comfortable in it. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that we had a rear facing car seat in the back, right in the middle for my daughter. And once she upgraded to front facing, this car became a lot more comfortable because I could actually move my seat all the way back. I actually don't mind driving this vehicle now. Yeah, it's slow, but I just love getting excellent gas mileage. If I'm just carting my kid to school or we're going to the supermarket or something like that, this is a perfect vehicle for for this. It's a car that we just don't really have to care about. We don't really worry about too much. I don't care if I get a ding and I just know that it's a Toyota and it's going to be incredibly reliable and it has been insanely reliable. And I used to complain about this car, about the visibility. I think I'm going to take that back because that was sort of compared to my Scion XB, which is like driving a wall of glass. This is pretty bad compared to that, but this is excellent compared to a lot of new cars. I thought this was terrible when this first came out, but a lot of new cars are even way worse than this in terms of outward visibility. So I take that back what I said about you uh, 2016 Prius. The visibility is not nearly as bad as I thought. I had no idea that things could have gotten so much worse with new car design. I like this car. We're going to drive it until it no longer drives and uh, hopefully that will be another 100,000 miles or so, maybe more. All right, we're sitting in my purple 1997 Ford Probe GT. I bought this car in 2020, so I've had this vehicle for four years. I can't believe I've had this thing for four years. Now, as I've mentioned in many of my videos, I bought this sight unseen at an online auction for the measly sum of $300. It's cost me a lot more than that over the years, but we'll get to that in a second. And like many of my vehicles, I don't know why I bought it. It was just sort of an impulsive thing. I mean, number one, it was purple. Number two, it was a Ford Probe, and when I saw this for sale. I hadn't seen a Ford Probe on the road in like a decade. So definitely a car that you rarely see anymore. So I just kind of had to have it. And at $300, yeah, I knew it was not going to be in the best condition and it certainly wasn't. But I figured at $300, I can't really go wrong, right? I don't know if that's true in the long run, but um, I did it. So 1997 was the last year of the Ford Probe in the United States. And a lot of people don't remember this car now, but back in the 90s, there was some love for this vehicle. Early on, it was pretty competitive with a lot of the other sport compact cars back then. But over time, as they made their way to second, third, and fourth owners, maintenance got deferred. So a lot of them are just gone. Many of them ended up in junkyards. So when I saw this thing for sale back in 2020, I just knew I had to try to take a chance on it. Okay, so memorable stories with this vehicle. Honestly, I haven't driven the car very much because most of my time with the vehicle, it's been broken. I would fix one thing, drive it around, and then something would break. Fix that, drive it around, and then something else would break, and so on, and so on, and so on. That's just the story of my time with this Ford Probe. And that's likely because it was $300 and the previous owner obviously didn't do a lot of maintenance here. I guess my best memory with this vehicle is my recent drive up to Angeles Crest Highway because it was the one time that I drove this car on a long trip and it survived the whole thing without overheating, without exploding. It was really nice to be able to enjoy and experience this car the way it was meant to be experienced. Yeah, there's still lots of issues here and there that I need to sort out, but at least based on that trip, it's kind of running all right now.
now. So in terms of maintenance, I've done so much timing belt, water pump, intake gasket, valve cover gaskets, replacing solenoids, belts. It needed a new flywheel. I put a whole new exhaust system on this car because the old one completely rusted apart. Early on, I was really good at keeping track of how much money I spent on this car. But at this point, it's, it's just a lot. <laughs> I've spent a lot of money on this car. And honestly, I've probably only driven it like a thousand miles so far. So uh, yeah, four years, a thousand miles. And I don't know how many thousands of dollars I put into this thing, but I should probably keep it for the next 10 years to get my money back out of it. But who knows? This might be a car that I sell soon because like I said, I'm trying to slim down my fleet. I'm trying to get things under control. And now is probably the time to sell it. You know, I should sell things when they're running well and that I know that the next owner isn't going to get screwed. So this one, as much as I love driving it now that it's fixed, I might end up selling it because I'm glad I got down to six cars, but I, I got to get it down to like three or four. So what's my favorite thing about this car? I think initially it was just the fact that you don't see them anymore and it was just nice to own and drive a car that has completely disappeared from American roads. I love the fact that it's purple. I really like the design of this vehicle, but honestly, after getting this thing fixed up and being able to drive it on some canyon roads, my favorite part of this car is the handling. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good handling vehicle considering that it's front wheel drive. And my least favorite thing about this car, if you've watched any of my old videos about this vehicle, is that engine bay is just so crammed. It's impossible to work on this car. There is just no space up there. When we had to replace the flywheel, we had to drop the engine. Yeah, I didn't make a video about that because I was so sad about it. But yes, we had to drop the engine out of this car in order to replace that flywheel. So that cost a lot of money. So yeah, my least favorite thing about this car is just that it's not really very easy to work on. As I mentioned, I think this is probably going to go up for sale in the next few months. Ford Probe ownership has certainly been an experience like no other. I mean, yeah, I don't know what else to say other than that. It's been an experience. Yeah, the exterior is not in the best shape. The clear coat was fading and yeah, it's faded a little bit more. And yes, there are lots of dings and dents. I'm pretty sure that the previous owner lived in Colorado and this car went through a hailstorm. So there are a few small dings and dents around here. I do kind of have a desire to paint this thing and really make it look like new, but at the same time, probably is it worth it? Yeah, the paint is just trashed. But honestly, I kind of like the patina. I'm just going to embrace it. One of my favorite parts of this car is this GT badge built into the taillight. I love that. And the very 90s probe logo. They knew this was a bad idea for a car name, but they went with it anyway. And the super chrome-tastic wheels. You might not know, but these are directional. So if you get a Ford Probe and you have these wheels, make sure you put them on the correct side of the car. Don't mess this up, future Ford Probe owners. And then looking inside the vehicle, it's in really excellent shape. You would never know that this vehicle is almost 30 years old. It looks great. And the last car that I need to talk about is Liam Nissan. As you'll notice, Liam is not here with us today. Liam is over at my friend Charles's house. We brought it over there thinking we were gonna work on it and get ready for a 24 hours of lemons race, but we haven't. It's been sitting over there for a few months, kind of in the same condition as it was like two years ago. So, so not much to report there, but I was just thinking about, you know, how long I've owned all these vehicles and we've owned Liam Nissan for almost 10 years. I bought it in 2015 when we were first looking for a 24 hours lemons car. It's been probably one of the most fun vehicles I've ever owned because I got to do all of these races with all my friends. So many stories, so many good times, so many bad times with the thing blowing up. But racing is by far the most fun automotive related thing I've ever done in my life, specifically 24 hours of lemons. Really, really want to get that car fixed. And hopefully by slimming down the fleet, by having a few less things on my mind when it comes to cars, just maybe we'll actually get to that someday soon. So what do you think? Is six cars still enough to consider me a car hoarder? I hope not. Although I may have replaced my car hoarding with a new addiction. Some of you know that I've been getting into e-bikes and yeah, now I have a few of them. It's kind of like when people addicted to cigarettes stop smoking. Sometimes they take up caffeine or working out. Just replace one addiction with another. Maybe that's what happened here. Anyway, I've got a few of these silly things and they're a ton of fun and incredibly useful. I'll make full videos with each of these bikes, but I can give you a brief rundown of what I've got here. This is a Rad Power Bikes Rad Wagon. This is the first e-bike that I got. It's a cargo bike. It's kind of my dork mobile. I just kind of look like a dork riding it because it looks so silly. It's got milk crates on the front and the back. Lots of space for stuff. This is basically my SUV of bikes. And over here I've got my folding bike. This is an Ingway Engine Pro. It goes 28 miles per hour. Kind of fast for a folding bike, but this one is also pretty useful, especially when I need to drop a vehicle off at the shop, which happens quite frequently. 
frequently so I can throw this in the back of a car and ride the bike home. And lastly, I've got this kind of moped style thing. This is an Ad Motor Solitan, a fun machine. I haven't really spent much time with this, so I hope to spend a little bit more time with this in the coming weeks. So anyway, that's uh, my new addiction right there. I'd like to say that I've got my car addiction under control. What do you think? Am I still a car hoarder? Let me know in the comments. I do want to sell a couple more of these vehicles, like I mentioned. I think the YJ is going to be the next thing to go. And then, sadly, I think my Ford Probe GT will be the next one after that. So if you're interested in either of those vehicles, let me know in the comments below. And getting the fleet down to a manageable level means that maybe every once in a while I can buy a new car, just one, not 17, not 24, just one car and work on that for a little bit, make some videos with it. It, and I will try, I will try my best to not get into the kind of situation I was last year with a whole bunch of just stupid purchases like that Cadillac and that Land Cruiser. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this stupid adventure. I hope you're well. If you want to help support the channel, please consider buying a Hellero t-shirt at hellero.tv shop. See you later.